Hello, today this is a user experience review of Dharma Wallet. Now, Dharma Wallet is a smart contract Ethereum based multi signature wallet. Now, I know that is a mouthful, but uh, let's just break that down. A smart contract wallet is different than other Ethereum wallets that we might be used to, such as MetaMask. MetaMask creates something called an externally owned account and holds user crypto there. Whereas a smart contract wallet is actually deploying the other kind of account on the Ethereum blockchain, which is a smart contract that represents the user's wallet. So this is a slight difference to maybe less technical people who don't understand those nuances in the background, but it does have significant user experience implications. And the one thing that Dharma really set out to do was improve account security and particularly the recovery process. So if I lose the private keys to my MetaMask, then all of my crypto is lost forever. And this is gonna be hard to get people from traditional finance to, to buy into this deal. I would say most people would be concerned being the sole custodians of their crypto. Smart contract wallets, however, give the user different ways of recovering their account. In Dharma, the user creates a, an account with an email and password, and their private key can actually be recovered through an email recovery process, which is sort of similar to Web2. So I'll show you that later on, but just understand that uh, smart contract wallets do serve a purpose and they improve the user experience, especially for less crypto native people. The downside to smart contract wallets is that they cost more. There's higher network fees associated with them because of a more complex backend architecture. Anyway, so um, let me get back out of the weeds here and just say that again, this is a user experience review. What I'm trying to do with these videos is to improve the user experience of the crypto ecosystem overall so that we can gain more adoption, user adoption, and then get this thing to go mainstream quicker. Okay, amazing. So let's start with the sign up process for the Dharma app. This is what the user sees when they first download it and enter into the app. Dharma is the Ethereum wallet that connects to your bank account. Now this is a USP, a unique selling point of the Dharma app that I'm gonna to get to later, but it has direct fiat bank integration into the app, unlike other crypto wallets. So we're gonna go down here and click create wallet. And again, this is still very dissimilar to how a normal Web3 crypto wallet would function, at least the signup process. Right now we are inputting an email and password, which is much more reminiscent of Web2 than it is Web3, right? On most Web3 signup processes, you would just be backing up a private key at this time, but instead we are creating almost like a username and password. We're doing the whole email verification thing. And now we have access to the Dharma app right here. It's starting at a very minimal user interface, which I like. It doesn't, in a lot of other crypto wallets, when you first enter into it, it shows all the different tokens and that you have zero balance for each of them because you've just created this wallet. Uh, I like that it doesn't do that here and that there's a very clear call to action, which is buy crypto. And we're gonna look at this feature here in a second, but again, you can click buy crypto. You can resend funds from other non-custodial wallets, or again, you can directly connect your bank account and fund this crypto wallet with a fiat bank. I wanna highlight this again, that the Dharma has a very different account experience or UI compared to other Web3 wallets. Other Web3 wallets, your identity is your private key and your public key. Uh, in this case, if I go to account in my settings, it shows when I joined, it's the associated email address. And now, yeah, here's my Dharma smart wallet uh, public address. Um, but yeah, very different and more reminiscent to Web2 than Web3. And I, I think that this could be a step in the right direction away from these really long, confusing public addresses to something more like a username or a Web2 email address. Uh, I think that this is going to decrease the hesitancy of 
user, first time users coming to crypto, they're gonna be more familiar with this kind of interaction than something like a MetaMask or Trust Wallet. Now also as part of my account, it says device connected. So somehow this iPhone that I was using is connected with my Dharma account. And in fact, Dharma stores the recovery, not, or sorry, the uh, private key, not on the cloud, on the internet anywhere, but uh, locally on the device. So only this device can access my Dharma funds. If I download the app on my iPad and I try to go in there and log in there, I'm gonna to have to go through a full recovery process. And so this is adding to the security that Dharma smart contract wallet affords us, definitely compared to um, other traditional wallets. Finally, the last major dissimilarity between Dharma and other wallets that I looked at is that, that, is that it has an explicit logout button down here at the bottom. So you go to settings, you go to logout, and then you can log in. And it's just so much like web 2.0 where now I'm logging in with an email and password. I can't emphasize how different this is compared to uh, the other crypto wallets that I looked at. The other crypto wallets don't have logout buttons. They only have delete wallet buttons, okay? So this is much more similar to Web2 than Web3, as I've said many times before. So now let's look at the recovery process and we're going to, again, continue this theme of how different a smart contract wallet is compared to other non-custodial Ethereum wallets. In my opinion, this recovery process is the main selling point for Dharma smart contract wallet. This is the added security that I was talking about in the beginning right here. So let's say that I lost my iPhone. So the Dharma private key that was stored on it has been lost. And now I am logging into this Dharma app for the first time on my new iPhone. That's the scenario right here. It says your Dharma smart wallet is not connected to this vice, right? It, it, it hasn't detected the uh, private key uh, on this device since it's a new iPhone. Without this key, you can't initiate transfers. So what I want to do is reconnect smart wallet and this is the recovery process. Now for normal Web3 wallets, what I would be doing here is putting in a 12 word recovery phrase. And uh, so it's much quicker in that sense um, if I have everything properly backed up. But if I lose that recovery phrase, I lose access to all my funds. Not with Dharma. Dharma gives you more of a guarantee in this way. Um, I can start account recovery right here, maintain access to funds. Recovery takes two to three days. It's gonna ask me like what happened and I could just say something like, um, like I switched devices, right? We're on it, please check your email. And now I get essentially email verification. Uh, so I confirm that I have access to my email. It, it confirms that I'm the right person to be initiating this recovery process and now starts a two to three day security period where the Dharma Labs team reviews this and then will give me access to my funds at the end of that security period. I don't know if I show it here, but it's nice because I can actually get back into my Dharma wallet at this time. I just can't move any crypto within it. So I can go in and I can see my account balances and see that all is good. Um, but I can't, again, move my crypto until the recovery process has been finalized. Let me just quickly show you another selling point to the Dharma app, which is where you can connect your bank account to the app and buy crypto directly through it. So if I go to Ether, I click buy, and then the source of the funds could come from my Fidelity account with a maximum purchase amount of $25,000, which is enormous. The other crypto wallets that I looked at have really bad in-app purchase methods. Like there are these weird third-party services like MoonPay or Simplex, and uh, first of all, they didn't work for me because I live in the state of Texas and apparently those services aren't legal and like they're just unavailable to Texas residents. But second of all, I could see that they have uh, like really small limits or like however you wanna think, like the, the amount of crypto you can buy is severely limited. Like I think you can only buy like $500 or a thousand worth. And then the fees that they charge you on it are very high. It's like 3% fees because you're using your credit card. So these are unattractive ways to do it in other apps, but in 
Dharma, it's quite nice because I've got this huge, 20, I could buy $25,000 worth of ether directly ported from my bank account and I'm doing this all within the app. Now, the interesting thing here, if I go to this next screen, is that they're actually conducting this on Uniswap, which was, which is slightly, um, it's, it's pretty interesting, right? That um, like they're going from my bank account, then they're converting USD somehow into USDC, and then they're converting, they're selling USDC into ETH, okay? Uh, and that's why there's such a high network fee because you're using an Ethereum DeFi protocol called Uniswap, which is a uh, decentralized exchange in order to do this. Now on a $25,000 purchase, these aren't very high at all, but if a user wants to buy less, like let's say like $100 worth, then obviously this network fee of $60 is gonna be prohibitively expensive. The Dharma fee, I don't understand here. I think that it, it would have to be a percentage of what you're trying to buy, um, but I don't know how that's calculated. And I think that Dharma should do a better job of, of more transparently telling the user what that fee is for and how it's calculated. Um, now, last thing to say is when you do buy your funds, they are held in, in your Dharma wallet, but in escrow for five days. And this is typical and it's behavior that you see on centralized exchanges when you make a bank to crypto purchase. And it's just because it takes that long for it to settle on the traditional bank layer. So, but just know that you won't be able to move those crypto funds for five days because they're being held in escrow. Now this is in the same vein, but it's even more of a unique feature in Dharma right here. So I just showed you how you can go from your fiat bank directly into ether. But what Dharma does is, and I'm gonna show you more on this later on, but Dharma has these inbuilt, inbuilt DeFi lending protocols uh, within the app, and you can actually go, go to supply to compound, which is a lending protocol, and I can select my bank account for directly funding this compound protocol with my fiat bank, which is a very unique thing to do right here. And you see that if I put $5,000 in, then I can get CUSDC, um, and I get that much, uh, 2.73 APY, and uh, it's, it's quite incredible. Uh, also, another benefit that you have with Dharma is you get something called Gaslight on some of these pro protocols. What Gaslight does is it batches all of the different transactions of Dharma users to Compound. It puts them into one transaction and then the users get to split that, uh, that single gas cost across each other. So I'm saving 62, basically 63% on network fees because I'm splitting those costs with other users. That's, that's a pretty nice feature where, yep, uh, Dharma aggregates people's funds into one transaction. Now this would not be a crypto wallet review if I didn't show you the most basic functionalities, which is receiving crypto and sending it. So let's look at the receive first, where we start on the home screen and I actually have to click this icon up here to find my public key and then also uh, this QR code which encodes, which encodes it. Now this uh, is fine and it's a pretty simple flow, but to be honest, I, I, I had a hard time finding uh, the QR code, like I, I just, in the, the public address, like if somebody had asked me like in this moment, um, please send me or like, or what's your address so I can send you crypto, it would be hard for me to find this as a first time user. Uh, this does not make sense to me. I can tell that this is a QR code now, but it doesn't make sense as a send and receive um, icon here. So if I were Dharma, I would change this UI here, but that's just a really small, simple thing. Uh, the other annoying pain point that I had here was that I couldn't click on this uh, text and copy it. Like usually in other wallets, you can just tap this once and it automatically copies the address to your clipboard. But instead, I had to go to click share and then do it uh, and, and then send send this through a um, or to a friend or family member, right? So, um, yep, just two small pain points there, but uh, now let's move over to send, and this is a major problem that uh, Dharma has right now. So it's, it's kind of the same similar flow. I click on my Ether asset, 
I click how much I want to send and who the recipient is, pasting in their public address. But this is really um, a, a huge downside to Dharma and the smart contract architecture, smart contract wallet architecture. Okay. So, and it's because of this extremely high network fee right here. Now, at the same time, like a, a ETH transfer on the Ethereum blockchain is 21,000 gas units. It's like one of the cheapest transactions that you can send on the Ethereum blockchain. And other crypto wallets, when I was transferring on the Ethereum blockchain at the same time of day um, as when I did this, it cost between one and three dollars to do on there. This cost $27, so almost $30, almost 10 times the network fee that it was costing me to send Ether between externally owned accounts on other crypto wallets. Again, it cost almost $30 on this Dharma wallet, which is just insane. It's just ridiculous. And um, I mean, that's a huge hit to the user experience. So as I said before, as you already know, smart contract wallets, they confer added security. There's a better recovery process, but it's more expensive. And so as a user, you have to make that trade off. If you're not really moving, if you don't move funds often, then Dharma Wallet might be a good place for you. It might be better for first time users, people less confident in the crypto ecosystem. But for me, this is just like, just kind of pisses me off that it would cost that much for me to do such a simple transaction. Now, interestingly, Dharma used to cover the gas of all Dharma users. Like Dharma users up until October, 2020, did not have to pay any gas. And as of October, 2020, they changed the policy so that um, users have to pay their transaction fees now. And, um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised after that policy was changed if many people attrited or left this app right here. Now I'll quickly show you the different earning capabilities that you have within Dharma. If I click this grid icon here at the top, it will take me sort of into like settings or oh, it says protocols. Okay. And uh, we have this big Aave ad here. You can use Uniswap to swap tokens, buy crypto with your bank, supply on Yearn, cool. Um, a more direct way of doing this is to go to lending plus yield. And we can see that we have access to three different DeFi lending protocols, Compound, Aave, and Yearn. And if I click on each of these tabs, I can see the different APYs for the tokens within those protocols. So I can kind of shop for the best APY right here. Again, a unique thing about this is that you can fund these protocols directly from your bank account. So that's pretty cool. And then also another added feature is I just showed you before that there's something called Gaslight. So I can save on gas by dividing it amongst the users, the Dharma users who are supplying to Aave in this case. Dharma also has the capability of exchanging tokens on a decentralized exchange. So it's first and foremost up in this app right here it's centrally located a swap right here and i've got ether so we know that i'm going from ether into another token or you can directly swap from your bank account again this is this uh this fiat bank connectivity that dharma offers which is cool but i'm going to go from ether and i'm going to actually choose sell token in this case and go to preview swap and here's the confirmation page right here. Uh, yeah, a high network fee as we'd expect. No gas light, which I was confused that on some protocols that I used had gas light, but on this I don't. So I, I don't really know when I am approved to use gas light or when I qualify for gas light. And then a Dharma fee, not sure where this is coming from. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like again, and, and I, I wish that Dharma was just more clear about why they're charging a fee. I'm not necessarily mad that they are. Now, um, I wish that, uh, like, so it says swap on Uniswap V2. I wish that, and that's cool that they're transparent. It's telling me where my crypto is being routed through. I like that. However, I wish that they went along with what MetaMask does. MetaMask uses a DEX aggregator and looks at DEXs across the Ethereum ecosystem and finds the best exchange rate for the pair that I'm trading. So in this case, Ether to sell, which DEX has the best exchange rate at this time? And then it routes my crypto through that DEX, thus giving me the best rate. I wish that Dharma did this, but it looks like we are locked into Uniswap V2. 
if they are doing this in the background, then they're not getting credit for it from me. And they should be more clear to the user that, you know, we are scanning different DEXs looking for the best rate for you. As I just said, I wish that I had access to more DApp or uh, DeFi protocols. So not just be able to use Uniswap, but also be able to get stuff on Balancer or which other Parasop, you know, whatever DEX has the best rate at that time. Having said that though, I want to be fair and show you something called Wallet Connect, which is an awesome feature within Dharma. It allows you to, and it's not just within Dharma, by the way, it, it's an open protocol within other crypto apps that allows you to basically pair your crypto wallet with the um, D app that you're accessing on your computer. So right now I'm on my desktop computer and I can go to uh, Uniswap. I go to the Uniswap app and when I go up to click connect, instead of, I think most people, yeah, they're probably used to clicking uh, MetaMask, but you can click uh, wallet connect here and um, it brings up this QR code specifically for wallet connect. Now I can go to my Dharma app. I can click this QR scanner right here. It says find a wallet connect QR code. I bring it up to my computer screen, connecting to wallet connect. We're connecting to wallet connect. This might take a couple seconds, seconds. And um, it asked me for approval. Uniswap is trying to access, uh, it's trying to view your wallet balance and activity, request approval for transactions. You click connect, it, it confirms that it has been connected. And then it's so cool. So once it connects, it just automatically turns the QR code off and injects my Dharma wallet into my desktop browser. So it's a really good user experience wallet connect. And now I'm able to use my uh, ether and I could go to any DEX that I want, any DEX aggregator that I want and use it there. So I don't have to do everything within the Dharma app. And this is what Wallet Connect allows, is it allows you to access the greater DApp ecosystem. Very important for crypto composability. Now I wanna give a call out here that not only does Dharma have a mobile app, but apparently Dharma started as a web app. So you go to app.dharma.io and then I logged in with my email and password, but I got this perpetual loading screen right here. And so the web app wasn't working and I couldn't review it, but I did just want to call out that this feature exists and I'm sure that they'll eventually uh, debug this issue that they're having and yeah but I like this uh, multi-device experience with a Dharma mobile app and then also being able to access your account with a web app on a normal browser. So the light that I have here is dying right now so I might look a little sinister but in conclusion I just showed you the user experience of the Dharma smart contract wallet. Again the difference is that uh, a smart contract is being deployed and it it basically mediates the process for the user to um, to recover their account and to hold their funds. And it's so it's this different backend architecture than something like MetaMask has to offer. Another really interesting thing about Dharma is that it allows you to connect your bank account directly to within the Dharma app and buy crypto with it or directly fund DeFi protocols like Compound and Aave through your bank account. This is very, a very good feature and it's different than most of the other wallets that I looked at. The other in-app purchase options for crypto are pretty bad. They have small limits like you can only buy as much as a thousand dollars worth of some crypto and then higher fees. But uh, Dharma solves this problem with like yeah directly connecting your fiat bank account into the app. This is really good in terms of user friction. It cuts out the uh, the crypto exchange middleman. So you don't have to go to Coinbase, connect your account to Coinbase, buy crypto there, and then transfer crypto into a non-custodial wallet. You can just load Dharma and then connect bank account and buy crypto within that Dharma app immediately. So this is good. It cuts out the centralized exchange middleman. Now, Again, this is the, the thing that I do want to say is that this smart contract wallet has security benefits to it, but it this co more complex backend architecture is going to cost more to use it essentially. You'll see in Argent, the other smart wallet contract or a wallet, <laughs> smart contract wallet that I looked at has like a $30 activation fee. So just getting started with the app costs money, whereas other non-custodial wallets uh, do not have this. 
and then uh, the gas prices and the network fees are higher because you're making these more complicated smart contract calls rather than just simple EOA to EOA um, ether transfers that cost 21,000 gas units.